Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com standard open in Baltimore, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I'm Nick Miller alongside Corey Dissinger. How are you doing, sir? Great. I would say you're doing great. <laughs> you're 7 0. You're playing the deck of the tournament so far. Thank you. Uh, we've had you on camera, and everyone's like, we need to see <laughs> what is going on in this deck. You're playing the green blue crush deck, so you're a deck built around Crush of Tentacles, but you're also kind of this in disguise delirium deck. It's one of the few four ofs in the deck. So, right. the green crush, yeah. Why are you playing this? So, I've been, I just love Crush of Tentacles and the combination between Den Protector and Crush to have an infinite loop where you can just lock opponents out of the game. I love that. And as soon as Emrakul came out, I realized that that is one of the best ways to just finish up the game because some decks can like play a Reflector Mage or other permanent based answers to the octopus that I can't just break through. So it's been an evolution since actually before Shadows came out, I've been playing this. Right, yeah, because obviously this format is kind of dominated by Reflector Mage, so a lot of people are like, well you crush and then you get your token and then they Reflector Mage your token. Right. But this deck can consistently do this so many times. Yeah. You're, and you're just building up all this mana, and yes. it doesn't matter if they're dealing with your octopus, the follow-ups you get to do after that yes. are just more than they can deal with. And uh, like you said, you build up mana, and if your opponent doesn't have any haste or flash threats, you can just keep crush looping until you get to 15 mana, and then do the crush loop attack with Lumbering Falls, because they can't block it if they don't have flash threats. But everyone's playing like Avacyn and stuff, so that's not right. as likely as it used to be, but there's a lot of outs you have. Right, you can create this hard lock if the game goes long enough. Yep. Uh, but let's take a look at the rest of the deck, because you got a ton of things moving around here. Yep. Uh, I think the important parts to touch on first are how Oath of Nyssa kind of combos with Crush, with crush so That's well. The, for six mana, going Oath into Surge Crush is just the best, because you, get a, you draw another Oath of Nyssa to play the next turn. You get an 8-8 eight, eight and you reset the board. Right. And on top of that, you know, you get to loop Dim Protector with Crush, but Jace also does a pretty good job of just giving you another Crush when you need it. You run for them, so it's okay to surge it back from your graveyard with Jace if you have multiples or sometimes you just have to. Right. All right, so with this green-blue creature sort of ramp deck, because you've got Mrs. Pilgrimage, and the, the kind of the game plan is to get up on mana yep. as you do this. Take us through the Delirium package, because this is also a Traverse the Ovenwall deck. Right. So there are a handful of one ofs in the deck. There's one Void Grafter, one Bounding Krasis, one Emrakul that can be searched up with Traverse, and that's really based on what your opponent's playing, what you need at the time. You can also find Rogue's Passage for a quick way to just finish off your opponent if they're at like eight and they haven't killed the Octopus and they think that they can just gum up the board with a bunch of creatures. You can traverse for Rogue's Passage and then just make it unblockable. Um, to enable Delirium, uh, one thing we really haven't touched on yet is Noose Constrictor, which is, this might look weird that I'm not playing Sylvan Advocate, but this deck, because I'm playing Crush and my end goal is to just keep resetting the board, this is a two mana creature that can block flyers and threaten to trade cards in my hand for cards on the board. It right. makes it lets me trade cards for tempo, which Advocate couldn't really do. So this has been a big addition in my opinion. Right, it's very good at killing the flying creatures, but also, you know, in a pinch, it can make your delirium easier. Yep. I've done that you at know. least like two or three times a day. Right, and you're getting all these cards back after Crush yes. that you have the resources to feed to it if you need to. And the deck's full of cards that are just two, three, four for ones, like Kiora, not seeing much play, but in this deck, it's the perfect shell for her because if you play her, you're almost always going to minus, and then she threatens to do one of two things the next turn. If she's not killed, if you have five lands, you can crush on turn five with Surge, with an Oath and plus in Kiora, or you can just minus her again and get a four <laughs> for one. So at worst, she's like, draw two cards, put two in the graveyard, gain a couple life because they have to kill her. Right. Other creatures you got going on here, Hangerback Walker, of course, sort of like the Hangerback Avacyn combo. You can zero it to get your crush for five if you have to do that kind yep. of thing. But also, Elvis Visionary kind of pulling another Oath of Nyssa slot. Yeah, right now, Hangerback and Visionary, I'm just testing, like, they're kind of filler at this point. You can tweak this to whatever you expect the meta to be, but they're safe picks because Elvis Visionary is going to make hands more keepable. It gets run over pretty quick, but it's fine. And Hangerback, Every once in a while you'll play it and start pumping it, but like you said, the key thing is the search for zero and discounting Emrakul further. Right. So Other quote-unquote ramp spells, you have Nyssa, which allows you to find a forest. You also have the, the Blighted Woodland, which yes. is another, you know, sort of ramp spell, but in a land that you get to play. Yeah, it's, I, 
I tried making this deck with like explosive vegetation, like four explosive vegetation, four Mrs. Pilgrimage, and I hated the fact that it made the top deck so much worse. Right now, I'm settling on two pilgrimages, and the play of Woodland is great because it's a land that doesn't end up being a bad ramp spell top deck. I mean, you can draw it and it's a land, but... Sure. Yeah. Plus, this is more than just getting a forest in the late game. It allows you to do so many things. She's a Phyrexian Arena that makes four fours sometimes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and That's... you can pull some Marasa back. It's like... Pull some Marasa has been so huge for me right now because a lot of decks are trying to out-tempo you and gaining six life is like buying at least a turn in many yeah. cases. And you have a couple copies of the Pulse, which Two. not only combo with just gaining you the life, Obviously, you have the Den Protector loop you can kind yep. of do with that card. With eight mana, you can just gain six life and grind out their creatures right. if they're unable to. Yeah. And then a counter spell here with Clash of Wills, I think, rounds out everything. Except for, of course, you've got Ishkana, the card yep. everyone is putting in every green deck at this point. I, I've, I've been underrating her that I have one in the main and one in the side right now, and I think it should almost be two in the main because it, whenever it gets Delirium, which it's not super often, but if you go Kiora into Ishkana, you almost always get the three spiders. Right. Yeah. All right. So where is this deck positioned in the metagame? Because I've seen you kind of take, you've taken out Bant Company, you've taken out green-white tokens. It seems to be hitting at kind of everything. I've been lucky to not play against humans and spirits. If you expect your meta to be full of humans and spirits, do not play this deck because you will get destroyed. You can maybe like main deck Jaddy offshoots and try and hedge against them, but that's going to ruin your good matchups. Like green-white tokens is almost unlosable because they're a deck that is built on incremental board advantage and we play a card that resets the board and we can do it infinite number of times. Right. So Green Tokens is a good matchup. Mid-range decks in general that try to just grind you out, you can grind people out better. So anyone trying to play mid-range, uh, I have not played against the Black White Angels deck yet, but last season the Black White Control deck was generally a very good matchup because they didn't play many threats and just playing Den Protector and all these one-for-ones against them, you'd eventually well, and two for ones in Kiora, you'd eventually grind them out. Right. Finally, a home for Kiora. You know, she's been wandering around. We finally got this tentacle based deck. Yes. You got all these things flying around. The sideboard, uh, you got a bunch of counter spells here. Yes. Just a suite of those. Then you have some more transverse targets between a World Breaker, Ishkana, a Death Miss Raptor package. Yes. And then uh, Gnarlwood Dryad. Yeah. So the uh, Aerial Valley is just. I hope that it's good enough to give me some random games against spirits. Norwood Dryad is for humans because it's a one drop that can trade with anything no matter what. Um, you also board it in against like Blue Red Eldrazi or decks that are trying that can go actually go over the top of you, like Ulamog decks, you might actually want to board out crush and go into a Dryad Death Mist Raptor counterspell package where you can just kill them quickly. Try to just beat them down. Yeah, because they're going to go over the top of you. Um, I've been boarding in the second Ishkana on almost every match. It's great against Bant Coco because they can't spell Queller it. They don't really have a clean way to deal with it, and it just buys you so much time. Uh, World Breaker's in here to come in against random three-color decks. It's to make It makes your mid-range matchups even better, and sure. if someone's playing control, it's just a great way to grind them out of the game. Right. One thing you mentioned, Spell Queller, I guess, is an important card to mention because Crush of Tentacles doesn't care about that card. Correct. And in fact, gets you a card after the Crush Correct. if they have done something with their Spell Queller. Yeah, there's a handful of good Spell Queller targets in the deck. Like, it's good against Kiora and it's good against Nissus Pilgrimage, but like, the deck's actually a lot of ones and twos and then five and up. Sure. Yeah, and Patrick Sullivan on co coverage last week mentioned if you want to beat the Spell Queller decks, it's the ones and twos and then everything over four. Yep. And this deck definitely kind of fits that bill. Uh, it, there are times when if you're on the draw and they go two drop Spell Queller Coco and they can get a good Coco, it's kind of hard to win, but you know, that's worth everyone, I think. Right. <laughs> well, you're 7-0. I think the coolest play I've seen you do so far was winning uh, round six in turns. Uh, you had an Emrakul in play, but your opponent had two Spell Quellers to block yep. with. Traverse the Ovenwald, finds the Rogue's Passage, yep. unblockable Emrakul. Yep. Oh, is it the Octopus and the Emrakul combined? Because right. he was at like 10 and he had enough to block enough trample damage to not just die. Right. But yeah. All right, well, the deck looks awesome. Everyone wanted to see it. We're 7-0 so far. I wish you the best of luck the rest of the way here. i got to give some quick shout-outs because okay. this has been a group project. Uh, Max Perlmutter, Dan Barkon, James Evelyn, Nick Heiler, Alan Sun have all... We've all been working on this for a long time, and it's been a ton of fun. All right, so. well, it's a pleasure to see it. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Baltimore.